This is Dr. Russell Blaylock, and you're listening to the Blaylock Health Channel. Today, uh, what I wanted to talk about was cadmium and cadmium toxicity. A lot of people are not aware of cadmium or that it is a, a toxic metal that can cause some significant problems at virtually every stage of life. Cadmium is a soft, silvery white metal. It's grouped on the periodic chart with zinc and mercury and appears to be a potent neurotoxin, that is a brain toxin, particularly in the developing brain. That was the baby was still in the uterus. It's also very toxic to the newborn baby, as we'll see. Now, like mercury, which we talked about last time, it's a very reactive metal, particularly in the presence of certain biological uh, molecules, what we call sulfhydro-containing enzymes. These are uh, enzymes that are all through the body that carry out important functions uh, for our metabolism and function of the brain in particular. And also various proteins are found to be damaged by this metal. Now, cadmium is naturally found in the environment, uh, though it's never in the elemental state. It's usually associated with zinc. For instance, when you find cadmium as an ore, uh, it's usually combined with the zinc. Some of the most common sources of cadmium in the environment is as a byproduct of zinc smelting and burning of fossil fuels. It's also associated with mining operations, battery production, uh, incineration at municipal waste sites, and with sludge-based phosphate-type fertilizers. Approximately 3,600 tons were used in 1985 alone for metal plating processes in paint pigments, plastic stabilizers, and in nickel-cadmium batteries. It's a component of many disposable consumer goods, and therefore cadmium ends up in a lot of landfills, much of which is burned, releasing this toxic substance into the atmosphere. The rain brings it down to the soil. The plants tend to absorb it. Food is the number one source of cadmium for human uh, toxicity. The average daily intake has risen to approximately 10 to 30 micrograms. Many leafy plants absorb cadmium from the soil, especially from the sludge-type fertilizers, as we mentioned. So the leafy green vegetables, things that you're going to use in salads, are a source of significant uh, cadmium, particularly in heavily contaminated areas. Organ meats such as kidney and shellfish also contain significant amounts of cadmium. Inhalation of cadmium released from factories Landfill incineration and cigarettes is the second major source of exposure. Secondhand smoke is dangerous as well and presents a danger particularly to newborns and small children. Now, cadmium is absorbed from the lungs. This absorption varies somewhere between 30% to as high as 90%. So if, if you're a smoker, not only are you getting uh, high levels of cadmium through your lungs, but also all the children and everyone else in the house is absorbing it from your secondhand smoke. And the small children absorb a lot more of the cadmium through their lungs than would the adults. Now, once cadmium enters the body, normally only about 1 to 5 percent is absorbed from the GI tract in adults. But in newborns, absorption is much higher, sometimes as high as 55 percent of that cadmium is absorbed through their GI tract. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference between that 1 to 5 percent in the adult and this 55 percent in these small children. Now, once uh, the cadmium is absorbed, it's quickly bound to the membranes of the red blood cells and to the albumin circulating in the blood. So as it's picked up through the GI tract, absorbed, enters the blood, it's quickly bound. Then it moves to the liver where it's metabolized further and the liver attempts to remove that cadmium. It has special detoxification molecules in it called metallothionine that binds that cadmium to try to prevent it from being toxic to the rest of the body. But if you have liver disease, if for instance you overuse alcohol or or you're exposed to different viruses like the hepatitis viruses, have damage from dietary indiscretions, particularly things like consuming a lot of high fructose corn syrup and have fatty liver disease. Those things can impair the, the ability of that liver to detoxify the cadmium, and then the cadmium flows out to the rest of the body, including the brain. Now, let's look for a moment the effects on the unborn baby, that is the baby still in the mother's womb, and the newborn baby within the first couple of years of life. 
Now, cadmium is particularly toxic at that level and that age group because the brain is undergoing such rapid development. The most intense, rapid, and complex development of the brain takes place at the last trimester of pregnancy and during the first year of birth. So most of the brain pathways and, and the complex formation of these nuclei in the brain is taking place during that period. Therefore, it's most vulnerable to these toxic substances. In most uh, studies that have been done, elevated cadmium levels have not been found in the unborn baby's brain, but in newborns, cadmium will pass into the brain in rather high levels. In fact, one day after birth in baby rats, the brain can absorb 10 to 20 times more cadmium than during adulthood. So this is a particularly vulnerable period for that child immediately after birth and for that first year. And a considerable amount of brain formation is taking place during that time. Now, you can easily see that if that brain is damaged and those pathways don't develop properly, that child is going to be impaired for the rest of its life. It may be a subtle impairment, in other words, language problems, may have problems with memory, learning, cannot learn as well as the other children, have behavioral problems that are either subtle or quite severe. Most studies have shown that exposing animals to cadmium during gestation, that is during this brain formation period, produce behavioral changes in the offspring, that was the babies. But one study found that exposures did not increase cadmium levels in the baby's body but it did produce a significant decrease in iron levels in the baby. Well, iron is absolutely essential for the formation of the brain, and iron deficiency in the mother, and therefore in the baby, can produce significant abnormalities in brain development. Well, cadmium interferes and lowers the brain iron level in these developing children. So you can see, even indirectly, cadmium has a profound effect on brain formation. Now, most of the brain damage done by cadmium at birth or after birth is to the blood vessels supplying the brain. Uh, These blood vessels are forming very rapidly along with this rapid development of the brain. The brain needs that blood supply. And cadmium can damage the development of those brain uh, blood vessels. Now, one study, researchers looked at the level of cadmium and 13 other metals in normal and learning disabled children. And what they found was that hair cadmium levels were consistently higher in mentally retarded children and children with borderline intelligence than in controls. So here we have a human study in which it showed, in fact, it will cause enough damage to the developing brain to produce retarded development. A possible effect is that when you see cadmium absorbed, it also increases lead absorption. And what they found is the effect on the IQ or the, or the brain development and function of the child varied with the lead and the cadmium. The cadmium affected one sort of learning and the lead affected another sort of learning. And combined, they're producing a significant effect on learning. So we see that uh, learning is profoundly affected by combinations of these toxic metals. So mercury, lead, cadmium, etc. In combination, in other words, in the real world, what we all see is producing a profound problem. And that the toxicity of these metals, like cadmium, can be very specific parts of the brain. In other words, not the whole brain is involved, but mainly the parts that are developing most rapidly, most complex, and most needed for learning. In other words, the the child that's going to be a bright, creative child, well-behaved, is going to need normal brain development, and this interferes with that. Now, what about cadmium toxicity in the adults? Toxicity does occur in adults in certain settings, particularly industrial settings. For example, workers in the electroplating, cadmium battery, plastic manufacturing, paint, textile, and phosphate fertilizer factories are at an increased risk. Smokers also, as we said, inhale a significant amount of cadmium, and a single pack of cigarettes can release up to two micrograms of cadmium into the lungs, and as we said, you can get up to 90% absorption through the lungs into the body. And interesting to remember is that unlike absorbing it through your GI tract, it bypasses the liver when you absorb it through the lung. So therefore, it can bypass that detoxification in the liver. Secondhand smoke is particularly dangerous in confined areas like in a car. If you're driving along with children in a car or you're in a house all day long with smokers, you can accumulate uh, significant amounts of cadmium 
not only in your own body, but in your children's body as well. And it tends to accumulate over time so that they're exposed to this day after day after day. It's going to accumulate in these tissues, particularly the liver, the kidneys, and the brain. Chronic exposure to high-dose cadmium can result in altered calcium metabolism because it interferes with that. Now, calcium is the number one cell signaling element in the body. In other words, how cells communicate. So if it's the leading cell communicator and this cadmium is interfering with it, it can interfere with a whole host of things that's going on in cells. One of the things we noticed that because of its effect on calcium is that it can result in osteomalacia, that is softening of the bones, easy fracture of bones. And people who are exposed to a lot of calcium complain of a lot of joint pains, bone pains when you uh, press on their bones, they're tender and hurt. When they stand or bend or sit, they complain of a lot of back pain, joint pain, bone pains. So this is very common. Another thing that was found that was associated with cadmium exposure in adults was hypertension. If you took animals and you gave them the, the same level of cadmium that humans are exposed to in some of these settings, we find their blood pressure uh, was immediately elevated. Because this is so reproducible in a number of the species of animals, the question was, is this something that is occurring and causing hypertension or high blood pressure in patients and people we see with high blood pressure? So they did test this, and they, some of the studies demonstrated that elevated cadmium levels in people with hypertension. Other studies did not find that correlation. But that is something that we need to be aware of, that you can produce hypertension with cadmium exposure. Now, because of the relationship between cadmium and calcium, and between cadmium and zinc, we see that people who have zinc deficiencies, which is very common in the United States, a lot of people have zinc deficiencies, particularly if you're chronically infected. In other words, you have a chronic inflammatory disorder of any kind. You become zinc deficient. And that zinc deficiency makes you hypersensitive to the toxic effect of the cadmium. So it's much more common than most of us realize. Now, another interesting effect is the effect of cadmium on reproduction. That is, how the testes produce their sperm, how they produce their hormones like testosterone. And several studies have shown that if you elevate cadmium levels, it can lead to damage to the testicles, that is, these delicate cells in the testicles. And if you continue the exposure, eventually it'll produce testicular tumors. Well, one of the things that's rising in our society is the incidence of testicular cancer among young people. Long-term, low-level exposure in experimental animals consistently leads to this testicular cancer and to prostate tumors. So that's another correlation with a tumor in males is prostate cancer. Of the effects on the brain, we also find that it can have deleterious effects on various neurotransmitters in the brain, such things as serotonin and this tryptophan metabolism that leads to serotonin neurotransmission. Well, if your serotonin level is low, it's associated with depression, anxiety, violence, homicidal ideation, that is, thinking about homicide. It can also cause dopamine elevations. When the dopamine's elevated in the presence of toxic metals, like mercury, lead, or cadmium, or aluminum, there's increased free radical generation that dopamine gets oxidized, and that increases your risk of things like Parkinson's disease. So there's a correlation there. And the other thing that we see commonly with cadmium is a lowering of the glutathione in cells, particularly in the brain cells. And this makes these cells infinitely vulnerable to damage, particularly by free radicals and lipid peroxidation. So your overall vulnerability to all toxins is directly correlated with your glutathione level, which is lowered by these toxic metals. Now, one of the sources of food ending up with cadmium levels that are too high happens to be saran wrap. It's high in cadmium, and we know that uh, if you wrap food in it, and it's particularly tightly vacuum-sealed foods, plastics or uh, saran wrap, the cadmium will leach out into the food, particularly if you heat it. For instance, if you take uh, your food and you wrap it in a saran wrap and you put it in the microwave, then you're releasing a considerable amount of cadmium into that food. Uh, and this is one of the ways that uh, cadmium ends up food as well. So don't wrap your food with saran wrap or other type wraps like this, food wraps, the clear ones. 
And don't use these, these vacuum seal packaging to heat foods. Now, when you cool it in a refrigerator or you have it in the freezer, less of it is leached out, but it's still not a good idea to have these plastic wraps in direct contact with your food, particularly if it's heated. So I hope this has helped out to understand how this cadmium is causing problems and that if your zinc is low, cadmium toxicity increases considerably. So you want to keep your zinc nurture up, but you don't want to take too much zinc. It's a good idea to get a zinc level done to measure the amount of zinc in your blood. You have to do a red blood cell zinc level or a hair zinc. And if it's low, you need to supplement with zinc. Usually about 15 to 30 milligrams a day will elevate your zinc level. It also makes it where you heal better. For instance, if you happen to have surgery and you have a zinc deficiency, you don't heal very well. So there's other benefits to this elevation of zinc other than just protecting you against cadmium toxicity. The information contained within these programs is not intended to replace or contradict that of your physician. This information is for educational purposes only. 